Greetings AP Calc students, Mr. Rickard here from Avon High School and we're going to close out our example one from topic 1.5, determining those really tricky limits by using some of our algebraic properties. In a previous pair of videos, we talked through examples 1a and 1b. And if you haven't had a chance to watch either of those videos, I would really encourage you to do that first because I'm going to go a little bit faster through the processes in order to solve these two limits. Now, if you remember, they are all going to hinge upon our limit properties that we see right there above. And in the examples that I'm going to do here with you in this video, we're going to focus on what I believe, if I can remember just from memory sake here, I believe we're going to talk about um, the, the um, <laughs> trying to remember. Maybe I should just like look at the examples. We are going to actually take a look at uh, properties, um, product, and I believe sum. So I think our part C here, I had to double check. So our part C of uh, example one is going to be another product. And then we're going to look at another sum for our part D. All right. Let's take a look at those examples. So once again, we see we've got the graph of F and G. Um, and we're going to find each of the following limits using a pair of one-sided limits. Now in problem C, finding the limit as x approaches 6 of f of x times f of x minus 1, we're not going to be using graph G at all. Now, if you remember from before, your normal plan of attack can be just to find the limit of the products. If you watched video example 1b, you learned that we felt that it was a much easier task on our part to rather than shift our function to the right one unit, we're going to instead shift the target of our limit to the left one unit and use or retain the original function f of x. Again, you know, you could shift the function, but when you have a multi-part problem like this and you redraw that graph of f of x minus 1 over the top of this, when things can get messy in a hurry and you may not be able to rely on that graph very easily for future questions, or if you need to go back and look at previous ones. Now, once again, the limit of f of x as x approaches 6 immediately grinds to a halt because we have a does not exist and you cannot operate with does not exist inside of a multiplication but that doesn't mean necessarily that our function um, our limit of this product won't exist we saw in examples 1a and, and 1b that that definitely wasn't the case so what you do at this point is you modify or embellish your limit approach using a one-sided approach and fulfill those two limits so the limit of f of x as x approaches 6 from the left no problem there right that's going to have a value of 2. And the limit of f of x as x approaches 5 from the left, no problem. We've got a value of 0. And of course, that product is going to be 0. But that, as in and of itself, means very little to us unless we work through the limit as x approaches 6 from the right side of this particular expression, which means that the second part of it would be x approaching 5 from the right of the original f of x. Now in this case, approach 6 from the left, uh, from the right rather, sorry, you're going to get that 0. And if we approach 5 from the right, we're going to get 0 as well. And of course, 0 times 0 is equivalent to something that we all know, 0. And so therefore, we can say, oh, I'm not ready for you just yet here, graph. So therefore, we can say that our limit as x approaches 6 overall of the original function. I just really like to rewrite the original function uh, f of x times f of x minus 1. There's a lot going on in this problem and I want to make sure that it's very clear as to what answer does get the value of 0. All right, now let's take a look at our graph and as I did in my previous videos, I showed that I could sketch a graph of f of x fairly easily here. And then if I move to page 1-3 here of my document, I could find uh, what the graph of f of x times f of x minus 1 looks like. All I got to do is open up my graph entry, insert f1, which is my f of x graph, multiply it by f1, but again with the 
translation there of the quantity x minus 1. And remember, the original problem was asking, what is the value of the limit as x approaches 6 from both sides? And I feel pretty confident that we're going to have a value of 0 there. Let's head back to our problem and take a look at part D. Part D, as you can see, is a, an addition problem, right, with another translation. But we're not going to really tackle it any differently. So we're going to go ahead, just assume that we can find the limit head on, approaching 3 from both sides. Again, not a big fan of altering the graph of g of x. So instead of shifting the graph to the left one, I will shift the target to the right one. All right. Now, once we start looking at the limit of f of x as x approaches 3, immediately we see does not exist, which means we're going to go into one-sided limit mode. All right, get rid of my work from the previous problem. Let x approach 3 from the left, and I'm going to have a y value that's approaching positive 1 on the f of x curve. Now, finally, I got to use the g of x graph. Let's let x approach 4 from the left. Upon doing that, I'm going to arrive or come close enough to a y value of 1, and so I get 2 for that one-sided limit. All right, put that on the back burner and do the same thing, but let x approach 3 from the right of your f of x and add it to the limit as x approaches 4 from the right of your g of x. Anxious to see what happens here. So if we approach 3 from the right on our f of x, it looks like the y value is going to sort of converge upon that value of 3. And if I approach 4 from the right, it looks like the y value is going to converge upon that 0. And 3 plus 0, of course, is 3. Now you look at those two limits and think to yourself, wait a minute, those are not equivalent to each other. So what is it that we can say about the limit as x approaches 3 of this sum, f of x plus g of x plus 1? And the answer is does not exist. The two one-sided limits are different values. All right, let's take a look and see if that pans out with our graphical approach. So once again, I go to the software here, and I am going to go ahead and get rid of this graph because I don't need him anymore. He pertains to problem C. And I'm going to enter now f1 of x, right? That was the f of x plus, and then if you recall, it was g of x plus 1. So that would be my f2 graph that I had previously entered. And then I'm going to type in x plus 1. And if you remember, our limit uh, was taken such that x approached 3. So lo and behold, if x approaches 3, you can see that this overall limit will fail to exist from both sides. But you do see that the individual one-sided limits are 2 and 3, respectively, as we showed them to be in our analysis. So hopefully this works out a little bit uh, and helps for you a little bit. Now, I do have another video coming up that's going to cover example 2 in my materials that's going to focus on the, the rules for limits for composite functions, which are just a little bit different. All right, hope the, uh, you'll check those out. In the meantime, good luck to you, and we'll see you next time.